So co-regulation is something that is very mammalian. Most mammals are de kind of dependent on each other for some sense of nervous system regulation. This is often occurring when they have close proximity to each other, but it can also happen through different kinds of vocalizations where we use a certain kind of sound that's airborne in order to know where each other are and to have a sense of proximity and a sense of the other person's state just by using sounds as well as sometimes visual uh, stimulus in terms of reading their nonverbal cues, their eye gaze, their facial gestures. So those are different mechanisms that we as mammals um, use. So we do it in much more complex ways as humans, but we use proximity, touch. We use our facial uh, gestures and reading all of that from the other person, reading their body posture, other kinds of visual cues. And we also listen for their tone of voice and what they're doing as well as our transmit our voice and those are different mechanisms we can use to regulate each other's nervous systems how it happens for us as mammals and humans is that if one of us is very dysregulated it would require the other person to be a bit more regulated in order for this to happen in order for the other person to become more regulated if both people are very dysregulated it, they both read off of each other's signals and it kind of keeps them in that state. So if you are becoming more aware of this, it can be something that you contribute to the relationships and social dynamics that you're a part of. Because the tricky thing is, is that it always takes the more self-aware person to go first in that sense, in a compassionate way, in a way that isn't making judgments about the other person's inability to regulate but just in a way that we know that if we're becoming aware of it and we have the capacity to figure out how to do it a little better, then we can contribute that to our relationships. So there's two kinds of co-regulation that we can use. The first is again, what I call conditional co-regulation. And that's where we come into the physical presence of another person or online, but we're with that other person in some capacity. And we're using that dynamic, that interaction to have a sense of regulation, whether that's a soothing form of it, where we're slowing down, maybe we're relaxing together, or it could be an energizing form of that, where we're playing sports or doing some sort of movement. In the mini book, I also mentioned that when people are doing joint movement or they have joint attention on something, we actually sometimes see a synchronization of brain waves, and that can give us a feeling of literally being on the same wavelength, which can feel very good to us. The other kind of co-regulation is unconditional. So this is again, kind of like with self-regulation, where we use our own mind to get into a certain state that we desire within us in the social dynamic that we're thinking of. So in this case, I have three different examples of this. One is where we're doing a compassion meditation, and this is used by different monks and in Buddhism, and it has actually been studied by neuroscientists, where we think about kind of concentric circles out. We think first about ourselves and we ask that we be free of suffering and that we feel peace and joy. We then think about people in our immediate circle and we think about them in ways where we are wishing them to be free of suffering and to feel a sense of calm and joy and peace. And then we move that circle out to the wider community we're a part of, the country, the world, and finally the entire planet and all of its beings. So there's very neat research on that. There is some research that suggests that as people do these concentric circles of compassion, there's uh, a beautiful brain waves that might happen where people can get into a sense of either transcendence or even have kind of aha moments and what they call gamma brain waves, where there's a synchronization of far flung networks that are not normally always connected that kind of connect in certain moments. So that is a form of compassion meditation. Another way we can use unconditional form of where we're using our mind to create new dynamics in our social interactions is by visualizing ahead of time a challenging interaction. But in this visualization to think about ourselves first in a very calm way. So one way we can do that is we can even visualize ourselves going up in an elevator wearing the clothes we're wearing that day. And then as we open the elevator at the top of a, a rooftop garden and it's beautiful, it's the way we want it to be. And we feel ourselves breathing and feeling and looking the way we would really like to 
feel and look and experience the world. So there's a sense of calm and confidence and assuredness to us. Then we can go back in the elevator, go down, push the ground floor. And as we open up, we can enter into a visualization of a very challenging situation we might be a part of. We can visualize that person. One thing that we can do in that moment, whether we're using the elevator or not, but just visualizing a challenging interaction is to first ground ourselves, center ourselves on a feeling of calm and confidence and assuredness and openness, curiosity, breathing the way that we enjoy breathing and to keep anchoring on that feeling as we visualize the difficult relationship. If we feel grounded in this experience of feeling like we, we like how we're breathing, we like how we feel in that moment, we can then even imagine that person doing something that we know that they often do that upsets us. So a certain facial gesture or tone of voice or phrase, but continue to feel that feeling that we enjoy. That is one technique where we learn how to associate something that feels very threatening to us, but we find a way to train our body to maintain its composure in that, in that moment. We may not have the perfect formula of what to say or exactly what to do, but if we practice that kind of visualization ahead of time, it can help us just in that moment, get a little bit back more in touch with our breath, with our body as a person is challenging us. And I have found this to be very helpful and other clients that I've taught this to have found that helpful too. And just to recap, so that is co-regulation. So that is us using our mind and our relationships in ways that create a feeling of a feeling better, a feeling of nervous system regulation. So there's two different ways. Again, we can do a conditional where we're actually in the presence of another person and we're using that relationship, that dynamic to help us regulate or an unconditional where we use our mind to, in a sense, prepare ourselves or release or forgive or have compassion for other people before we are even with them and when we're not necessarily in their presence, but it helps us bring that kind of energy into the situation as we do interact with them later. So thanks for joining me for module two and I'll see you in module three.